Uh, so next we'll invite Becca Barrington, Barrington sorry, from the Geriatrics. Geriatrics Theatre is an internationally known and Edmonton-based not-for-profit uh, company that's creating and promoting seniors and intergenerational theatre. They've spent the past few years writing and performing a suite of new plays that view growing older from multiple generations. Becca has also recently joined H. Friendly Edmonton as one of our change makers with the Intergenerational Action Hub. Please help me welcome Becca. Generational uh, has a lot of perks. Currently, we have 15 geriatrics involved, and this year we welcomed 15 students, and our age is 18 to 88 years old. So, working with the students, uh, we've been working with them since 2007, it generates new energy, brilliant ideas, and lasting friendships. Oftentimes, the student volunteers continue on after the program, and all of our staff is former volunteers as well. Uh, I took the class in 2010, and I never left. So I'm still here today. Uh, what we found, bringing in the students in 2007, was that our plays focused on aging rather than age, and they really celebrate our commonalities that we find in working together. Uh, one of the geriatrics said uh, in an interview, we love working with the friends because they're so busy, because we're so busy saying goodbye at our age, it's nice to say hello. So our project, the very long-named project, uh, involves seniors and students, both university and high school age, in a process of theatrical exploration and research into the experience of aging in Edmonton, which is a very broad statement. But I can break our project down into three parts. So it was the development of new plays. We initially thought we were going to develop one play, which proved uh, ridiculous, and then workshops uh, we drama students from Jasper Place High School, and then from that, the creation of a teaching manual so that we can uh, inspire other teachers to use intergenerational theater in their classroom. Our goal is to create further intergenerational connections, uh, both with high school, junior high, and university students as well. So as I mentioned, we initially decided we were going to write one play. And then when we started that project, we thought, how can we fit all of this information into one play? So it became five plays. And uh, when we started, we started just naturally going about the rehearsals as we usually do, uh, sharing stories within the company. And what we realized was that although we have 15 geriatrics, we have very limited stories. It doesn't represent all of the seniors in Greater Edmonton. So we broke our project down into four parts. We went out into the community, and we did interviews. Uh, we did collective creation with the geriatrics and friends. We did research, and then we presented our stories 
uh, over the past two years to focus groups. So groups of seniors, families, healthcare providers, uh, youth, and a variety of other people to get their thoughts on what we were presenting. Did it represent their experiences? Uh, when we went out and did interviews, uh, we were uh, excited to get a wealth of stories, but then we also realized that these weren't necessarily our stories to tell. So it presented a new challenge and then possibly a new project in the future. And then with the collective creation of geriatrics and friends, what we often did was we brought in the stories that we that we got from those interviews. And the geriatrics said, oh, that reminds me of this, or this is my experience, or that's definitely me. And we used that information to expand these plays into what they are today. Uh, so our plays, all of these five plays, explore, we hope, what it means to be a senior in Edmonton. Uh, and I know that we only uh, reach just a small portion of all the stories that are out there. And they're about family, history, love and dating, ageism, abuse, and maintaining our health and independence. So the plays are Claire and Jacob, From the 60s to Today, Four People Share Their Stories of Coming Out. Uh, that play actually features my own story about coming out to my grandmother a few years ago. And then Sanctuary, which is a play about finding a safe place. Uh, it's about elder abuse and about um, connecting with your family. Reading the signs is a very hot topic and a, definitely a, our most requested play so far. And it's about you know giving up your driver's license and having to make those choices. Be careful, um, which is about aging in place and renovating your house in order to stay safe and keep your family safe. And then love me Tinder, which always gets many many laughs, which is about <laughs> online dating. So what happens when you start online dating at uh, 80, which is our um, character's age? So we started presenting those plays uh, in the spring uh, last year, and they were well received by audiences, and we're going to continue to present those plays for the next few years. And as we present the plays, we continue to connect with our audiences, get their feedback, and our plays are, off, are always evolving. So that was part one of our project. And now part two and three involves the teaching manual, which seemed like a simple idea when we proposed it. And then in doing it, we realized, oh, it's very hard to write a teaching manual. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy to say that we have finished all of the edits. And we have now sent it off to a designer. So in 2019, it's going to be a tangible thing. And the teaching manual, we connected with Edith Mitchell, who's a drama teacher at Jasper Place High School. We've been working with them since 2010. And uh, she uh, collaborated with us to write the bulk of the manual, which explores two projects that you could do with high school students and seniors. The first project being um, staging stories from seniors' lives. And then the second being staging scenes based on issues of concern. So staging. Uh, stories involves uh, interviewing the seniors and then asking them questions about school, work, family, adventure, and then looking for those unique stories, you know, twists and unexpected occurrences, a new perspective or mini discovery, and then the students turn those stories into plays and come back and they present it to the seniors. And what we found in doing this project over the last few years is that it really develops these different friendships and these different connections. And the seniors and the students both come away with really uh, changed perspectives. And they uh, often connect with each other later on by going to different performances or events. And then issues of concern. We've done this project twice. The first time we did it, we explored ageism. And what we found was three sort of connecting um, themes amongst ageism with students and ageism with seniors. One was speaking style, you know, teenagers often mumble, they speak too quickly. And then seniors always talk about back in the day. <laughs> and we also uh, talked a lot about technology. So, you know, the teens are addicted and the seniors are overwhelmed. There's a beautiful scene that they came up with where a senior went into the Apple store with their iPhone and then the student who was the Apple care worker spoke in gibberish. And the senior just left, didn't know what to do. And then emotional state, you know, teens are full of angst and seniors are, off, are always grumpy. So <laughs> in exploring these different uh, stereotypes, uh, they often found common ground of, oh yes, people don't see me the way that 
I truly am. And it, it uh, allowed for many, many, many uh, great conversations. And then in 2017, we explored mental health, which was a very challenging topic to explore. We found um, that the seniors were more comfortable talking about the teens' mental health and engaging with the teens in that way. And the seniors um, wanted to talk about positive aspects of mental health, you know, the need to stay cheerful. So it took a lot of coaxing and, and developing really safe space in a community to get uh, the groups to talk about mental health for both age groups. Uh, eventually, different difficult experience surfaced, such as the amount of prescription drugs seniors are encouraged to take or caring for someone who has mental health concerns. Um, but we found that project to be very, very valuable. It, the students that we were working with were really, really engaged about talking about their own mental health and well-being. And again, we were able to find common ground and develop some really unique stories and scenes to share. Uh, these are just some of the student reflections, and you can find these in 2019 in our uh, teaching manual that we developed. So what the students came away with from working with uh, the geriatrics. You know, senior citizens have a lot to offer so long as we give them a chance to be heard. You can't judge a book by its cover that goes for both seniors and teenagers. And I learned a lot that regardless of age, if we have common interests, we can all get along and work together as a team, not as elders and a team. So that's just a little bit about our project. It's a long name and a long project, but thank you so much for inviting me.